Good morning and welcome back on the Health Watch. We're heading into flu and cold season soon. This time of year is really difficult for people with asthma as well. Yeah, the third week of September is actually known as Asthma Peak Week because it's when we see the most asthma related ER and hospital visits. And joining us now is asthma and allergy expert Dr. Renee Matthews. Dr. Matthews, thanks so much for being here. Thank or you Dr. for having Renee. me. Yes, Dr. I think Renee. What you prefer. <laughs> yes. Um, we know that people in the U.S., about one in 12 of them are dealing with asthma. Why is this week particularly challenging? So this week is the week, obviously, kids are going back to school, so lots of germs that they weren't going to, you know, be exposed to at home. Mm -hmm. Then the weather is starting to cool down most of the country. Yeah, so most of the most country. Of the country. Not, Not here yet, but most. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and so that those are the biggest things is that, you know, now the teachers are now exposed to all these extra germs because of all the kids in the classrooms. And so that's the biggest thing. And, and the cooling down, how does that impact it? So a lot of asthmatics, we have a lot of trouble with cool, cold weather. Oh, so okay. that's oh, interesting. why. Yeah. And, and that's also the ragweed and pollen increases also in this time of the year. Mm. So that's, yeah. Something I was surprised to learn is that black Americans are more likely to have asthma, but specifically five times more likely than a white American yeah. to be hospitalized from it and go to the emergency room. Why is that? So unfortunately, often we don't have primary care doctors. So if we don't have a primary care doctor. We definitely don't have an allergist. Yeah. And so that is why um, a lot of black Americans, unfortunately, use the urgent care or the emergency room as their doctor. And so that's why they, um, they end up in the hospital more often. Okay. Well, how do you know when an asthma asthma flare-up is serious enough to, you know, warrant a trip to the hospital? So, if you're an asthmatic and you have an allergist, then you have an asthma action plan and it's in your plan. Mm -hmm. And the asthma action plan is much like a stoplight, red, yellow, and green. So you know when you're in your green zone, everything's great. When you're in yellow, you're starting to get really sick, and then red, you definitely need to be at the hospital. So, if you don't have an asthma action plan, if you are having trouble breathing for an extended period of time, go to the hospital and see about it because it can go from zero to 180 like really quickly. Mm -hmm. So you wanna definitely, if you're having trouble breathing because you've worked out and all of a sudden you can't catch your breath after 10 minutes or 20 minutes or something, you know, these are all alarms that you might wanna go and see the doctor. And see when you somebody. say can't catch your breath <clears throat> quickly to follow up, you mean you literally have literally. A, a hard time yes. taking a breath? Exactly. Okay, yeah. okay. And finally, for anyone watching this morning, what can people and families do to protect themselves and try and stay healthy yes. during the season? So I have six things. One, when you get inside, take off your clothes and shower because pollen and mold can stick to your hair and your skin and your clothing. So you want to definitely do that so it's not in your house. There is a fabulous air quality thing on allergyasthmanetwork.org. You can put in your zip code. If the air quality is bad, make certain that one, you wear a mask outside, or if you don't have to, don't go outside that day. Close all windows. That means the doors, the, that means your car windows and your home windows because the pollen will come in. HEPA filters, H-E-P-A, mm -hmm. you should get those on your house um, and you're at your house and that'll help with the airborne allergens. And then of course you need to have them changed regularly on your, your HVAC system. And then um, if, you, if you have to rake leaves, wear a mask because the mold spores often are in the, in the leaves that you rake because that's when the dampness is. Mm -hmm. And then also any damp areas like your kitchen, your bathroom or your basement, make sure Sure that they are dry and clean at all times because of once again mold spores. Okay, all right, Dr. Renee Matthews, thank you so much for being with us. It's really important, Dina, Very. because it could literally save a life. Thank you. Thank you for the Thanks great so tips. Much. We appreciate thank you. it. All right, so we're turning to be